skincare routine that I'm going to share with you this morning is going to be focused on two kind of themes that I have going on, eye creams and vitamin C. Now, as many of you know, my skincare routine doesn't often begin, in the morning at least, with a cleanse. I prefer just to jump right into the hydration step and not do a cleanse. And my current hydration step is the Sukoyaka Suhara, your re-moisturizing lotion. I really like this, and I just found that you can get it at Walmart. It's been a little tricky to find lately, but it looks like Walmart started carrying it, so that's excellent news. Step two is going to be talking to you about a new eye cream that I'm using. It's the Biolumin C eye serum, along with something that just came in the mail, the Dew Eye Masks. They're forever eye masks made out of silicone, and you put your eye cream on, then apply this, and let it set for about 10 minutes. So let's jump right into it. So I'm, I usually just splash on, take a dollop of like a tablespoon or two, of my Urea Lotion and just splash it on face and decollete and let that kind of dry down for a moment. Still keep it a little bit damp as that helps sort of moisturize your skin to allow the rest of your products to penetrate. And the Bio, oops, I can't remember what's their name. The Bio Lumen C is a new product for me. It looks like it's going to be a nice creamy texture. Forget the band-aid, sorry about that. And I'm going to apply it under my eye area and then I'm going to put on these new eye masks. So I got a little bit too much, but maybe I did just pat under the eye. I'm going to take the extra up above the eyebrow bone and I'm going to open up these eye masks. Here's the container they come in. And they're two adorable little eye masks that you use. You just place them, excuse the clattering, under your eye, right over top of your serum. And you can let them sit for about 10 minutes. So this is going to be sort of my new routine, I think. What do you think? I think that looks amazing. I'm feeling more relaxed already. Okay, and they come in this handy dandy tin. When you're done, you just wash them off with soap and water, put them on like a little paper towel or a tissue, let them air dry, pop them back into their case, and you're good to go for the next day. So, and like, let's see what they say on the back. A sheet mask every day without the unnecessary waste. So, of course, you're not throwing away and the um, under eye mask that you would typically do. You're just going to wash and rinse. And, uh, Helping you get more out of your routine, the Forever Eye Mask is a reusable eye patch that holds serums and creams close to the skin, slowing evaporation. These masks allow for products to fully sink in and leave skin prepped and hydrated. So that's the goal. While this is sinking in, I want to talk to you about a couple other eye masks that I've been trying. Now this is a bit of a surprise. It's the Trader Joe's Eye Cream. It's the Supreme Hydrating Cream, and I can attest that it is supremely hydrating. All out ingredients in the Trader Joe's Hydrating Eye Cream are Manuka Honey, CoQ10, an antioxidant, and Marula, and I think a little bit of argan oil. Anyway, super hydrating, surprisingly just an amazing under eye cream. The other one that I know I've already talked to you about is from the Inculus, the Caffeine Eye Cream. Caffeine is purported to help depuff and restore the eye area just by kind of settling down the puffiness. You can also just grab a cold spoon, rub that on the under eye, do a little lymph drainage massage. That works too. So you don't have to go all out. And get a dedicated eye cream. I've been sort of skeptical about eye creams over the years, but I'm giving them a try. And like I said, I've kind of jumped in to the deep end here with these new eye masks. Okay, well, my eye mask is setting. I'm gonna also apply my Bimatoprost, which is my prescription lash serum. Now I have a new technique I'm using for that. I just put a dropper. I don't use the applicators that come with it. I use my own eyeliner brush. One drop, and I start in the corner, and then to the outer, kind of hard to see, and then the outer, lid and then do the center. The reason I do this now is that it helps me focus the serum on each end of my eyelash 
rim or the, the lid, each end of the lid, because what I was happening, what was happening is the eyelashes were growing in, but they were only growing in the center. And I think I was just concentrating the serum just in the center and sort of forgetting these outer corners. Now that I'm using this technique and I use my own brush because it loads a smaller amount, it helps last longer and it doesn't just drip down my eyes. Um, the large brushes that come with the kit when you purchase the prescription are just clumsy and difficult to use. They're also very scratchy. I find they irritate the eye. Using a nice little fine eyelash um, sort of eyeliner brush works much better. So I'm going to do both eyes, like I said, come in the center, outer corner, and then over the top. And you can see my lashes are growing really well. I've had really good luck with it. I know some people are afraid of the discoloration it can cause to the iris. Um, I am not worried about that. That's my personal preference. Everyone sort of has their own risk. But I have gotten such amazing lashes from using this product. I've tried other lash serums and I, um, I've had good luck with those too. So I'm going to be doing a little review of the lash serums that I'm using. They both uh, both types use prostaglandins, but that's kind of for another video. Okay, so um, while I'm letting this dry down and my eye mask sink in, let's see, the next step on our vitamin C train here is the Biosense Vitamin C and Rose Oil. I am not a fan of the scent of rose, but this is light enough and fades very quickly and doesn't seem to bother me whatsoever. And what I really like about this is I've been trying a new type of vitamin C called tetrahexyl decal ascorbate. It is sort of an analog of the L-ascorbic, you know, hero ingredient vitamin C. And for me, I wanted to try this because in the wintertime, my skin was really dry and the L-ascorbic was a little bit too drying. Additionally, this plays really well with retinol. And I've been using my Retin-A more consistently over this winter. I'm up to five days a week, unless I need to take a break, but this, this can play well with your retinol. No problems there, so you don't have to be worried about that. And like I said, the rose oil doesn't put me off. I'm not a fan of rose. Everyone, there are a lot of people that like rose. So I just use one drop on each of my center fingers, tap, 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 and apply. With an oil, of course, a little goes a long way. And then, of course, another three drops for my decollete. I take my skincare all the way down to my decollete. Don't want to forget that. Oh my goodness. Okay. And I always put a little on my ears just to keep those ears nice and plump. My earlobes plump so my earrings look good and they're not drooping down. While I'm letting the Biosense kind of sink in and do its thing, I give it a couple minutes because it really just needs to kind of soak in, so I'm going to go grab some more so coffee. I finished with my treatment session. I'm going to take these eye masks off and get them under running water here and let them dry down. I feel my eyes feel really lush and plump. I think that worked really nicely. So we've done our cleanse, which I skipped this morning hydrate, and our treatment. So we did an under eye treatment, and this morning we're doing our vitamin C, Biosun Squalane, and now I, the next step for me would typically be a moisturizer. I'm also skipping that step because I feel like my skin is like moisturized enough with the urea hydrating step that I used, but typically I would also add a moisturizer at this step. So last step in your sun, last step in your skincare routine is your SPF. Now, SPF is a personal choice. People love mineral, people love chemical. It's a personal choice. I'm gonna leave that up to you. Personally, I use both. As long as you're using enough, and as long as you're getting good coverage, and you're taking the time and effort to apply a couple layers, multiple layers throughout the day, and you're you know, getting it rinsed off at the end of the day with a double cleanse, you know, it really doesn't matter what sunscreen you use. Use the sunscreen you like, use the sunscreen you're gonna wear. But I'm gonna give you my the way I use sunscreen, and maybe this could work for you. Like, like I said in a couple videos ago, I'm using currently using the Peter Thomas Roth 45 Mineral. I find that sits lovely around the eyes, doesn't burn, doesn't sting. I just find that as a first step of mineral, sunscreen is great for me. Now, typically, if you want to use your quarter teaspoon, or 
your three finger, three finger method, it really doesn't matter. Choose a method that you like, that you will follow each and every day, and just get that sunscreen on. So I usually apply my mineral in a couple layers, and it does take some time to work it in. I'm not gonna lie, you know, there's no exact science, but what I said, what I love about a mineral sunscreen is you can just go right over the eyes, take your time massaging it in around the neck, up over the ears, and I do let that dry down. I usually, you know, go and do a house chore or sit and watch the news for a little bit while this dries down. So this is going to be a little bit time lapsed here, so always give that a chance to absorb in nicely. And then I'm going to come in with my hourglass powder. Gives it a nice set look for the day. And my lash sensational. So I'm going to let this dry down. I'm going to go watch a little news, grab some more coffee, be right back. I let my sunscreen dry down a bit. But sometimes it still feels just a little bit too glowy, and especially in the warmer, especially in the warmer months. And so I like to use the hourglass diffused light. It's just a beautiful, light, luminous powder. It doesn't give too much shine, but it kind of dampens down some of that sunscreen flashback that you can get and just sets your sunscreen so it doesn't transfer. It's just a beautiful last step. And I don't feel like it really removes much sunscreen at all. It just like kind of tap it in everywhere. Oops, look at that. Fuzzy going on there. All right, so hopefully you guys are enjoying the self-care Sunday where we just relax together and treat ourselves to a beautiful skincare session. Okay. I feel like I kind of got that a little bit everywhere. Last step for me after sunscreen is a little bit of mascara, which let's, there it is. I'm using the Lash Sensational. If you haven't seen my lash off video, I'll put a link here or a card here. Oh my gosh, this drugstore mascara is amazing. It's creamy. It separates every single lash with minimal effort. I just love it. What do you think? I think it just looks beautiful. And I don't get a lot of transfer that I have to clean up afterwards. So I find this to be like my new like holy grail mascara. I know a lot of you agree about that. I've got a lot of great comments that you know you're also enjoying this and loving it. And I'm sort of a little bit late to the party on this one, but I found it. So I'm super excited. Okay, so the last step in my routine would be to throw on my hat and head out the door and take the dog for a walk. This hat is adorable. I just got it at Target, it's like 10 bucks. You can either wear it cowboy style a little bit or like full on garden style with kind of a round dome. So I'm loving this. I'll be popping this on, getting the dog ready to go for a walk. And actually, the, before I go out the door, I always throw on my chemical sunscreen and leave it by the door. I'm going to do this step now with you so that you kind of know how I use both a mineral and a chemical together in one daily routine. I'll apply this usually a couple times during the day on top and it really does not interfere with even if I had a bit of makeup on today, like if I did some blusher and I, I just it just doesn't seem to interfere with it. And it has some wonderful advanced filters. It has like five advanced filters. They're not, I just, like I said, just like pat down the foam and I just pat it on. And then I've just got my extra layer going. It might be a little, little white at first, but it tamps right down. Gives me that extra coverage that I need in this like super intense sun that we have here in Colorado. And I just feel like that multiple layers gets me protected and I just feel like it'll save me from skin cancer scares and you need a lot you don't need a little bit of sunscreen you need a lot of sunscreen to really get the <laughs> falling apart here get the get the SPF recommended 
on the label. The more time you spend putting on sunscreen and the more layers you use, it's shown to provide better coverage. I recently had a family member lose part of their ear to skin cancer and, you know, I had another relative lose a good chunk of his leg. So it's serious. You need to apply multiple layers. You need to find one that you love, that you will apply, that you're dedicated to. Mineral, chemical, physical, organic. It, personally, I don't think it matters as long as you're wearing it, you're dedicated to it, and you're protecting yourself. So I hope you've enjoyed this sun care. <laughs> I hope, yes, sun care. I hope you have enjoyed the sun care because that is one of my take home messages today. But I hope you've enjoyed this self care Sunday with me as I shared my morning routine. If you're interested in the do eye masks, link down below. I'm working on a code for you. Fingers crossed. I'll get that um, on this video by the time it goes up. So thanks everybody for joining me. Oh, and don't forget your lips. My sugar, SPF, lip care. I've also, on the recommendation of one of my subscribers, purchased the um, Jack Black 25 SPF. So I'm going to be trying that lip care. So anyway, bye everybody. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your Sunday. Take good care of yourself. Bye.